Mertens, the director, the deputy director at the University of Maryland, and she will speak with us about having the hard conversations, a 360 leadership perspective. Kelly currently serves as the deputy athletic director and chief operating officer at Maryland and has over two decades of administrative experience in intercollegiate athletics. During her four years at the University of Maryland, she has been responsible for leading both internal and external operations and has played a vital role in Maryland's transition to the Big Ten Conference. So if there's anyone who can certainly talk with us about having the hard conversations, it is Kelly. So at the end of this, we will have time for questions. So please tweet them to at America East and make sure to use the hashtag 3P Academy. Kelly, it's all yours. Oh, wow. Thank you so much. Um, this is uh, definitely an honor uh, to be a part of this and really excited that uh, America East is doing something like this. I wish that when I was coming up in the business, there was there were, there were these sorts of opportunities. Um, but um, just really excited uh, to be here and talk to you about difficult conversations. Um, it's funny, um, as I think back over my career, and um, I think what we, in our business, it seems like sometimes every day you're having difficult conversations. and. Um, and now they seem to be um, um, happening every day. I think, you know, 20 years ago, you didn't have as many difficult conversations um, that you seem to have right now. And as our, as people coming into the workforce change, I think that also has um, changed how you handle difficult conversations. Because again, me being in the business over 20 years. Um, most of my uh, bosses have been coaches. And so when coaches are having difficult conversations, they're not reading a book <laughs> on, having, on how to have that conversation. They're telling you exactly what they want, exactly what they expect. And then, you know, as that former student athlete and your coach, you're just doing, you know, what they say. And so coming up through that, and then now you have a new generation and um, I think right now we have four gener gener generations in the workforce. And so when you take all of that in and how people learn, how people deal with conflict, um, how people embrace and perceive conflict and differences all plays an important part um, in handling difficult conversations. And so a couple of things that I try to think about before I have the conversation is, you know, what's the purpose? What is the purpose? So whether that's an employee um, or even just a teammate, one of your colleagues that's that said something or done something and you just want to really have some understanding about it, you, I think you start by asking yourself four crucial questions. You know, what's the purpose? You know, why am I having this conversation? And then you have to really think about what are my own perceptions about the situation and what assumptions have I made about the situation? Um, then what are the issues? What are my own issues, right? Because we all, sometimes when there's those things, we want to make it seem like it's everybody else's, you know, uh, fault. But at times we have our own issues that we are being blinded by that we won't have an honest conversation about as well. And, um, and then what's our attitude? You know, is our attitude one of, hey, let's get to the bottom of this, or are we just so frustrated because we've taken so much um, that our attitude is, is somehow um, not operating at, at, uh, at, the, at, at the best? And so, you know, for me, I look at those four things, and, and I'm constantly reminding myself before I go into this, <clears throat> what's my purpose? <clears throat> What perception or assumptions have I made about this situation? What are my own issues or my own uh, things that I really need to take ownership of? And then what's my attitude going in? So once I've done that, it's really then sitting down um, and, and, and having the conversation. Um, and I think a lot of times people make mistakes um, when they go into the conversation and, and the person is on the defensive. 
you know, because usually when you come in, you're calling someone and saying, hey, I want to see you, and your own body language could be tight because these, who, who signs up to say, hey, choose me, I want to run in and have that difficult conversation for you. Um, and I think, you know, I think there's some gender pieces that play into it sometimes where, you know, when my husband laughs at me all the time because he would say, oh, guys, just have a conversation. He goes, why do you have to do all this prep work? Just have the conversation. <laughs> and, um, and I think it's just how I process things. I really, really just want to process things um, because, again, whether you're just talking about some behavior modifications with staff, whether you have to let someone go, whatever that difficult conversation is, um, you know, uh, you have to prep yourself to be in the right frame of mind because it could go wrong and blow up in your face and then it could prevent you from, from doing it the next time because you'll say, oh my gosh, I, I just failed miserably. Um, I had a situation once where we had, um, I had someone who had done a great job and I told them they had done a great job. Um, I, I think I had announced it, and if I had to count, I may have said it maybe five to six times on different occasions. And the one occasion that I didn't, I was recognizing the other people that had done a good job. And this person was upset because I didn't acknowledge them at that time. And so for me, I'm wrapping my brain around it around this, and I'm thinking, okay, I've got to have this difficult conversation, but how can I have this conversation when this person is really charged because they think that I didn't think they did a good job. Now, again, I'm processing it in my head, okay? I need to have a conversation, but what's the purpose of the conversation, right? What assumptions and, and perceptions do I have? My perception is like, oh, my God, does this person, every time I open my mouth, I need to say, oh, wow, you did a great job. Thanks for putting that on the shelf, right? Um, what are my own issues? My own issues is I came up in an era where if your boss told you a good job, the one year, one time in the 10 years you worked for him, you were pleased. But we're not in that generation right now. We're in a generation where people need to hear that consistently. And so, again, I talked about we're in a unique situation where we have different generations, four different generations in the workforce as a whole. Um, and so a lot of times we want to talk about uh, gender differences and uh, ethnic differences, but there's this generational difference that's really going to seep itself um, heavily in, in, our, in our workplace and how are we handling it, dealing with it. And so again, in my head, I'm thinking, my gosh, <laughs> okay? Um, and so if I don't frame my attitude and get myself together using those four things that I talked about, then I'm going to go in that situation and it's going to be destroyed. And even though I'm the supervisor, I can't rely upon how I came up. I just can't. Because if I do, I'm not going to be a successful leader. And so some of this is just checking your checking yourself, you know, and humbling yourself. Um, because, again, that's what leadership is about. And so, um, so, again, you sit and you want to probe and try to understand um, where – What's their issue? Where are they coming from? So, you know, I sat and I probed. Um, and, you know, you have to sit there. And for some, you may have to bite your tongue, hold your composure. But you want to probe and listen to uh, where they are. And learn as much as possible. You know, ask questions um, to learn as much as possible. Um, and then I think after you do that from a probing standpoint, you recognize and acknowledge. You know, you recognize that that's uh, how they took it um, and how they see it from their um, perspective. It's key to show them that you've heard them. <clears throat> and this, is, this can be difficult for some folks. Because I'll admit, it was difficult for me. Because I, in my head, if I'm recognizing and acknowledging, I'm in agreement. I'm, I'm saying that I agree with that pers perspective. But that's key. By recognizing and acknowledging, you're not agreeing. You're acknowledging that they have feelings in that regard, right? You're acknowledging them to, the, and that'll help break down, I think, uh, the defenses too. You know, I hear what you're saying, and maybe even rephrase it or restate it 
um, so that you can ask, okay, clearly, is this what you're saying, right? So again, I think you probe to, to truly find out and understand the person and what the issue is from their perspective, um, and then you recognize and sort of acknowledge um, what they what they talked about or what <clears throat> their, their problem seems to be, um, and and so support it in the sense of um, I can see how you may have fought this, or I can see how you may have um, gotten to that point. Here's what the intent was. So again, you're supporting it, but you're also taking this opportunity to explain what your intent was and what, uh, what the problem is. Most of the time, what I found is that difficult conversations occur or need to occur because somewhere um, down the line there was a communication gap where the communication wasn't as effective as it needed to be in order to achieve whatever the goal was. And so from that standpoint, you have to put some of that back on yourself again as a leader. And, and I, don't, I don't want this to seem like I'm saying we as leaders or in leadership positions have all the blame. <laughs> no, that's not the case. But I think when you're in a leadership position, um, your primary um, responsibility is to help get the most out of your people. And how do you do that? Right? You do it with encouragement. You do it with making them feel as though they can come to you and have a conversation uh, about anything. But once you establish that, that relationship, you know, it, it helps tremendously. And so, again, I think you have to, to clarify, um, support what they're saying, but then also clarify uh, your intent. And then once that's done, then you figure out how do we go about bringing this to the solution? You know, how do we bridge, the, how do we build this bridge so that we both have an understanding of one another? Um, and what are the things that we can do moving forward so that this bump in the road doesn't happen again? And remember, I said that a large part of the need for the difficult conversation is because somewhere the communication broke down. And so now you're at this point where you're building this bridge, if you will, to say, moving forward, this is this is how um, this is how I communicate. This is what it means when I do this. At any point in time that you feel a particular way, can we both agree that you will come to me or I will come to you? Um, and so, again, I hope that sort of gives uh, just an all-around view or an overview of, of how it's worked for me, and uh, it's a learning process each and every day. <laughs> it's not like you master you master these things, um, but I think for me, these are just a couple of um, tidbits that, that help me um, deal with uh, difficult conversations. Great. Thank you for that insight. So what I hear you saying is a lot of the quote-unquote top-down type of conversations. But what if I'm a, a young employee and I need to have a challenging conversation up? How do you do that kind of up the chain? You know, I don't think I don't think the method that I've identified changes, honestly. I think at the end of the day, if I'm if I'm an employee and I want to have this conversation with my boss, I really have to ask myself what's that what's that purpose? Uh, what's my purpose of this conversation? You know, what is it that I'm hoping? Um, what perceptions have I made about my about my boss? Have I perceived that because um, I wasn't included in that meeting um, that um, he doesn't think I do a good job or she doesn't think I do a good job? What assumptions? And so I think the way that I've tried to outline this is that it works whether it's top down or bottom up. Because it's just, it's things that you can practice, and they're very practical. Try to make it very easy, very practical. Um, but I, I think it works um, both ways. That's, that's great advice. So all you out there in TV land, don't forget that you can uh, tweet in any questions that you have at America East, and make sure you use that hashtag 3P 
Academy. I'm, I have more questions, but I want to make sure we give everybody an opportunity to, to have their questions answered. Um, so looking at, and you, you touched on it a little bit, sometimes we have to let people go. And, and, and that is a really hard conversation. And that necessarily isn't a communication breakdown, but you're you know, initiating this conversation. And sometimes people are, are blindsided um, by that. So how, help, help us um, understand that, those types of conversations a little bit better. Well, someone once told me um, about seven, eight years ago that when you're when you need to let someone go, if you've done everything the right way, they will tell you they need to go. It's the strangest thing, and I thought, are you kidding? <laughs> but this particular approach that I'm talking about, I think also leads to that, because my philosophy um, from a leadership standpoint is when I sit down with someone to do their performance review, they should not be shocked. And if we're good leaders, then we should, along the way, um, coach our folks to let them know the things they should do better so that when you sit down, there's nothing that they should be shocked about because you should have talked to them about that in September, October, November, and given, the, and given them sort of ideas on some things to do things better if that's what you thought they needed to do better. Um, and so I'm a big believer, again, from that communication standpoint, is if there's some things I think that an employee needs to work on and we're getting close to if we don't fix this, then we need to probably part ways. We sit down and we'll talk through it, but I will already type the letter that basically um, goes over what we just reviewed. And it says, hey, you're doing a good job in this, you're doing a good job in this. These are some things that I need to see. And you don't want to give a person 10 or 15 things, you know, even if they need to work on all 15 things, right? You give them five things that you need them to do, three to five things. Um, and with a, with a target date to come back to see how much progress is made. Is made. But you also let them know if we don't see any, any improvement in these areas in the next whatever time frame then we need to probably go to step two. And if you have that conversation, whether it's a coach or an employee, usually they say, hey, you know what, I probably need to talk about something else. And then I think at that time, you know, that's the place where um, you, you just want to have some empathy for someone and you give them a chance to, to find that, that other opportunity. You know? But I, I, again, I think, it, I think if you do these particular things, uh, in that communication, you'll be surprised. When I say communication, you'll be surprised on what someone believes their intent was when they said it to what the receiver heard. And so I think that works even with employees that aren't doing necessarily the best job that you want them to do. Sure. Absolutely. And it sounds like the underarching theme of all of this is um, communication and having that relationship up front. Um, you know, I wouldn't jump in, and, and you and I necessarily wouldn't have this, you know, hard conversation right away. We would have had a foundation and a relationship built on months or years before it, it came to that point. Yes, you're absolutely right. You know, I think in, in our business, uh, again, I'm going generational. Um, you know, uh, many times people are focused on the mission. Right? They're, they're just missional in their sense of the job. I come to I come to work, I do my job, you know, I pay my time, I roll up my sleeves, I dive right in, I'm here for the student athletes. Um, that's our mission, you know, their mission, mission, mission. And um, relation is also important. So you have missional and relational. And you need both of those in order to be um, tremendously successful as a leader. And so like you just mentioned, um, Relationally, if I have that relationship, then my conversation, uh, my quote unquote difficult conversation won't be as difficult. But it's still, in my opinion, you still uh, employ uh, sort of this game plan and checklist before you go in. Um, but sometimes it has to be, 
more practice if you haven't built the relationship. And I think, unfortunately, though, a lot of times now, people believe that the relationship is more important. And because they have the relationship, they won't have the difficult conversation, too. And so while they'll give the, the person have the relationship the pass, or the person they don't have the relationship with won't get that same pass, even if they're doing the same sorts of things. And so again, I think going back to that first, what's the purpose? What's the perception? What are our own issues? Right? And then um, what's our attitude? Um, I can have that typical conversation with that person over there um, because I don't necessarily like them, if you will. But this person, that's my friend, so I kind of look past um, what some of their issues are. And so I think we have to be careful of that as well. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm sure everybody really appreciates those those uh, foundations to really take a moment before you walk into the conversation and even jot down your ideas and, and what you want to say. And it probably doesn't hurt to have a script um, walking in there in the first few times or actually all the times that you have to engage in a conversation that puts you outside of your comfort zone a little bit. Yes, I did it for this one. This was a... <laughs> <laughs> well, great, Kelly. This has been fantastic and insightful, and we really appreciate you taking the time out on this rainy, this rainy Maryland morning um, to share uh, share your thoughts with us about having the hard conversation. Um, for all of those that want to share this video with uh, your peers and your colleagues, it will be available um, through the America East um, to share this in the future. So thank you again. Everybody have a great day. Good luck to all your teams that are competing. Thanks again, Kelly. Thank you.